Hi, Ricky. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Great. We are delighted that you've joined us. Um, you are the founder of Chocolate Milk and Donut, CM&D, and also a highly valued creator on our global marketplace, Blend Market. But for the people who don't know you, maybe you could give a little introduction and, um, and yeah, introduce CM&D. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. We've been uh, part of the platform for a long time. And so um, we met some of your founding partners many years ago and got to share a pint in person when that was actually a thing. And so we've been following the development of the platform um, ever since. And so um, we've had lots of really interesting opportunities come to us through the platform. And, and so it's been, a, it's been a ride. And so thank you for, for you know, doing what you guys do. Um, so uh, CM&D or Chocolate Milk and Donuts, we're a, a full service uh, production, VR production studio based in Austin, Texas. Um, we provide uh, virtual reality, augmented reality and 360 video um, services. And so we started as a 360 video production company uh, many, many years ago. Um, it'll be our fifth anniversary this summer. Um, and so I come from a film background. And so jumping into the 360 video space um, was, was an easier transition than jumping into like the fully interactive space right away. And so, you know, <clears throat> I watched a, a, a film from the creators Felix and Paul that they did about um, the Circus Soleil a couple of years ago. And that, that, was my first, that was my aha moment, right? Seeing this new form of storytelling and you know this this new form of art that that was coming online in in this case 360 video or virtual reality um and so that was really what hooked me and then you know when i started cm and d one of the things that i used to work in the traditional video production space and one of the things that i saw at the the um agency I was working for, they did a great job, right? They produced really good content. Um, but I felt that they, that there was a missing link in the puzzle. And it was, we would work really hard for a client to create this amazing piece of content. And then we would just hand it to them and walk off. And you'd have this beautiful video that sat on someone's website and got 200 views. And it just wasn't, the value to me wasn't being brought all the way, you know, forward. And so, when I started CMD, one of the things we say we're full service, and when we say that, we we really mean that. So we work with our clients um, from like truly from the beginning of an idea all the way through distribution and monitoring and follow up. So, you know, one of the things I think that VR, and this goes for all immersive tech, right? Is it is any new technology can be very gimmicky when it comes out, and sometimes that can be value adding, right? Um, but but when it comes to creating real valuable solutions for businesses and consumers and agencies is is understanding the long tail effect that these experiences can have and so that's what we like to do at cm and d right like let's come up with a great concept together what story are we going to tell what audience are we going to try and um, capture or you know engage with with this piece of content but then making sure that we as the experts help our clients through that entire approach of before we ever build anything, we want to know what headset is this going on? What platform is this going to live on? How are you going to monitor that platform? What kind of goals or KPIs do you have to prove that this piece of content is valuable or not? Um, and so that's really what we like to do um, at CMD. It's not just about creating good content, but creating good content that um, drives value. And ultimately engages people. And right. uh, like you said, kind of how they're consuming that content is really important and um right. it's uh, it's interesting that you mentioned the set of soleil as your aha moment because uh previous uh previously in this series i was talking with alex rule one of our vr directors shout out to, to alex also a creator on our platform and one of her aha moments was the set of soleil and that kind of uh the acrobatics coming at you and putting the headset on for the first time and just really bringing that to life but um yeah, it's, it's such uh, an immersive technology that it can really transport you and engage you. Right. Great. Well, you mentioned um, how immersive technologies can have such an incredible span of applications and use cases um, from the gimmicky to, to the very real and important and actually one of the things that I wanted to talk to you more about today was the training element where virtual reality and uh, VR headsets can play a role in that um, and how we can 
you know, use it for a range of different training um, from soft skills right through to kind of very technical hard skills. Um, and I, I've seen your recent piece um, on your site, again, we'll link to this, um, but I wondered if you could kind of take me through um, the differences between the technical and the soft skills training and just what the impact of training with virtual reality is. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, overall, you know, regardless of what type of training that you're going to provide to to somebody, you know, and this goes right to what you were saying, right, about virtual reality as a training medium, it quite simply put VR, and I, I like to call it a magic blindfold, right, because you put it on and it, it literally, and this has been proven by people much smarter than me, right, that that putting that putting that headset on tricks when when done right, right, when you create that immersion, you, you really do trick the user's mind into believing that what they're seeing is actually happening, right? And so you create that presence, you create that huge level of immersion. And just right there, right, you've got a more engaged audience than maybe taking an online course on your computer as an, as an example. And so when it comes to training, that's VR and training, that's really one of the big benefits. But when you look at, you know, the difference between soft skill and technical skill, um, right, technical skills, one of the great things about VR is that you can now start to use muscle memory, right? So let's say we have to understand how to, how to drive a lift, right? A forklift, as we call here in the US, right? And so in order to do that right now on, on a computer simulation, you're pushing keys on a keyboard, right? Whereas in VR, you actually have, you can, you can pull levers and you can, you can look around things. And so that, that sense of immersion, that sense of six degrees of freedom and the ability to actually move things, right, creates actual muscle memory and it fires the same neuroreceptors in the brain of the user as if they were actually taking part in that activity in the real world. So just right there, you can see the amount of, of um, you know, increase in, in um, presence and, and power that that can have on a user. When it comes to soft skills, right, that's a little bit different same idea, right? Um, you know, these soft skills think um, HR issues, right? We just did a piece on um, mental health, right? So creating empathy, understanding of different um, different people's situations. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you're, if you're doing, you know, I was reading up on a piece about um, um, sexual harassment in the workplace. And if you're not, you know, if you're not a female, as an example, right, you might not ever under really understand as a male, like, what is it? I don't understand what that feels like. And so with VR, now we can put people in that person's shoes. And now you can, again, as a male, I can really actually understand and feel through the power of VR, through that power of immersion. I can understand what it's like to be a, a female in the workplace who's being harassed about her, her looks, for instance. And so like, as a soft skills training piece, I mean, that's going to be way more powerful than the cheesy 1990s VHS video that a lot of us have to watch for these types of yeah. training in the workplace. So, so I think whether it's technical, technical or soft skills training, just that, that power of immersion, right? That power of presence that VR creates, it just is, it's, you know, exacerbated in a good way in the, in the training space. Absolutely. And you talk there about kind of the, the muscle memory, which is hugely important, kind of physically trying and repeating these exercises for when um, a real life situation happens. I'm thinking of um, the shooter in the Walmart um, a couple of years ago and how um, Walmart was actually one of the first um, large companies to, to undertake VR training and how actually that um, intruder uh, training helped save time and ultimately save lives in a scenario like that which they wouldn't have necessarily have been um, in or as engaged or uh, or have such uh, impactful results had it have not been that they were in an incredibly realistic scenario when they were doing undertaking that training that's right You talked there about the forklift truck, which actually we, we call it that as well. So that's OK. That's uh, that's transatlantic term. Uh, and you talked about that as an example of your technical skills, uh, technical training uh, with VR. Is there is there any kind of work that you can talk us through? Any kind of other examples of where virtual reality training has has helped in um, in teaching some more of the technical, more physical skills? 
Yeah. You know, there's one example that we did for a university um, that I can talk to a little bit. You know, what's interesting is it ties into your last point there about, um, you know, Walmart and being able to recreate these scenarios, right? Where, you know, how do you, how do you create an active shooter type scenario without a ton of actors or some other, you know, very complex thing. And so not only does VR, you know, technical skills training um, provide a really excellent tool for scaling your training, right? Where you can create these large scale scenarios for one person and you can repeat that. Um, you know, you can also, um, but, but where I was going with that actually is, the, is that the other thing about this is not only can you recreate these interesting scenarios, is it safe? Right. And so one of the technical, one of the first kind of hands on technical pieces we did was for um, a science lab in a university. And they wanted to teach students about the um, basics of battery technology. And so using what looks like a fish tank, right, you can actually create um, a battery using, you know, um, oh man, I'm, I don't remember the, all the technical comp components of a battery, but um, <laughs> as, as you can, so, so there's a couple of things that was really interesting is one is it gave students the ability to physically use the physically, right? pick up and having to move the anode and the diode and, and put these into the tank of water. Um, and so they were able to do that, hook up a battery, create this electrical current. And so they were able to do this hands-on training as if they were in a real lab, but it was also 100% safe, right? There was no opportunity for anybody to get shocked or, you know, in, in our current, you know, environment, right? It was all, it could all be done remotely, but you're still getting that in-person lab experience. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was really interesting. And then the other part that by, you know, taking this into a VR space that we found interesting is that we were able to create, we were able to show inside the experience, like how the electricity molecules were flowing. And so not only, you know, it's a scalable solution, it's a hands-on solution that's still giving you the opportunity to, um, you know, physically interact with things, um, but now we can actually add another level of information where if you were to really do this in a, in a tank of water, you can't see the molecular structure of the electricity changing and how it works in the water, right? That's, that concept is impossible to show in real life. And so, so we got to actually kind of take the, digiti the digital aspect of that um, experience as well and actually add another layer that, that you wouldn't have in real life. Um, so it's like we got kind of to take the best of both worlds of what a physical experience of like an in-lab experience would be like, but then also, you know, adding more information and more learning opportunity for students because this was a digital environment. Exactly. So not only using virtual reality to create hyper-realistic scenarios that people can learn from, but also um, augmenting that with additional information to make them better than a real life scenario so that there's additional right. learning and additional uh, information being shared. So. You mentioned that actually you were also working on another piece around mental health and mm -hmm. VR training for empathy. And um, I've actually read on your site this incredible piece that you've done with Western State Hospital. I think that's what you're alluding to, that project there. And I would love for you to tell us more about that one. Um, yeah, so so we, we did this project. Um, we finished it last year, actually, and it's, it's just right now being rolled out. And so um, uh, it, it is a pretty... It was, it was a really exciting opportunity for us. So it just happened to be that I, my mother um, is a special ed teacher. And so when we saw, so I grew up around mental, you know, a lot of mental health type of um, conversations and, you know, to help in her classroom as a kid and all that sort of stuff. And so when we saw this opportunity, it was a, a government um, opportunity. We worked with the state of Washington um, uh, to do this. Um, and so we applied like many other companies. And, and so we were um, um, happy and proud to be the winner of that contract. And so one of the unique parts about this experience was, you know, we got the opportunity. So the piece, the piece is a, um, the final piece is a, is a five part um, uh, 360 video based virtual reality training experience. And the story takes users, um, it's called Lena's journey. And, and then we, we take um, users on this journey with this woman, Lena, from the time she's a child, all the way to the time and she's in her mid thirties about uh, um, uh, what the average, average or normal situ um, life might be like for someone who has severe schizophrenia in this case. And the goal of this piece was to create um, a deeper level of understanding and empathy about mental illness and how it affects people. Because I think a lot of us in society, right, have these very misconceived or, you know, kind of, um, we have these preconceived notions of what we believe 
people that severe you know mental illness have. And this is based on a true story. We actually interviewed um, mental health patients in the hospital, and one of them was an ex police officer. Like this person was a was a total just like I mean she was a police officer for years, and then there were certain life circumstances that triggered this mental kind of degradation. And so for, for us to be able to work with such a passionate, smart group of people to bring this piece to life was really, really amazing experience. And so that's, I think that's what made this particular piece of like soft skills training so powerful is that we got the opportunity to work with a, a huge group of people from the hospital, not only patients, um, we got to work with psychologists, we got to work with trainers, we got to work with a huge group of people that have spent so much time and energy around folks that suffer from severe mental illness. And we were able to bring that to life on the screen. And what was what the reason that they wanted to use virtual reality, right? The reason the hospital already had this idea of using virtual reality um, was because of what we've been talking about, right? That the the opportunity to, to put someone in another person's shoes, the idea, the, the, the ability to create presence. Mm -hmm. And so we use that that idea combined with like storytelling to engage the user and then you know, put them in Lena's life, right? Put them in Lena's shoes. And there's, you know, it's a lot of the film is shot where you get to kind of watch things unfold. You're in the room, you're at the table, right? Watching Lena and her daughter, right? Have conversations and her daughter being like, what, what do you, what, what? Like, you know, and like seeing the confusion. And then at moments we actually pop you into Lena's actual point of view. And we use that very carefully because you don't want to overdo that yeah. um, but it gives people the opportunity because a lot of folks you you don't understand that their their reality is completely um is, is completely not uh what's the right word it's 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 a it's it's disillusioned from what we get right their reality what they see what they hear what they feel is not what is happening in the physical reality around them and so to vr gives you the ability to let other people experience that and it was just it's been an incredibly powerful um you know it was incredibly powerful for us to be part of that experience but but now seeing the results at the hospital um and they haven't kind of published anything yet they've been doing a long-term study but just some of the little tidbits that we're hearing about you know nurses that have been working in the hospital for 25 years saying oh my god i never knew i didn't get it until now right that type of thing is like I mean, holy smokes, you know, someone who's been doing this for 25 years and they watch a 40 minutes worth of VR content and all of a sudden they go, oh, that's what this is like. I mean, what, what, you know, these are educated people. What, you know, it's just, it just goes to show the power of what this technology can do for, for all sorts of different types of training. And is it specifically for the nurses and the, the clinical kind of side of the treatment um, to, to kind of put themselves in the in the shoes or in the in the in the lives of, of somebody with these um conditions or is it, is it so the the piece um it's for every single um employee that comes through the hospital so this wow. hospital um, has over 3500 employees and it's everybody from the guys who you know make the food in the kitchen to the folks that mop the hallways to the doctors mm -hmm. everybody that works in the hospital system gets to go through this training. And so it's a, it's a two week program and the virtual reality components are sprinkled throughout mm -hmm. that two weeks. And what's also really interesting about the VR piece is that it allows folks, you go in once, right? And it's in, in, in the third episode, Lena has like a big breakdown and so she's screaming and she's freaking out because her daughter didn't get to come see her. And so she's, she's having a hard day. And the first time you watch it, you're fixated on Lena, right? You're just like, whoa, there's a lot of energy happening here. But with VR, what's really cool is when you go back, and this is a great learning example or learning opportunity, is you, you're fixated on the, the energy of this person. But then when you go back and you watch it again, you realize that there's other patients creeping around. And then you can see the other staff members and how they, how they are taking over the situation and again great learning experience because the first time you're consumed by this this moment happening but as an employee that's not the safe thing to do the safe thing to do is to stay calm and relaxed and pay attention to what's going on around you right creating that situational awareness and it, with vr that's you can't do that with another medium right and so so folks um, the students are getting to go back they catch their own mistake they go ah I was fixated on this moment when I shouldn't have been, I should have been paying attention to what's going on around me. Now they can go back into that VR simulation and basically track 
practice again, right? Mm -hmm. And look around and see what else is going on. And, and again, it just, it, it's such a, it creates such these unique learning opportunities that just aren't possible in other mediums. And catches what might happen in, in a, a first time real life example, right. to be distracted by that energy, you don't get a do over, you know? Right. So you have to kind of, um, you can't rewind it and say actually the way that I should have um, focused in this scenario is totally different um but you know that that's that's another one of the benefits of vr and rewinding and and rewiring how we respond to things and changing our behaviors recognizing and then uh and then changing that's right uh, there's something you touched on there that that i think is really interesting um if if i can i'd like to just expand yeah. on it a hair um, and so you, you've used the term hyper-realistic two times. And so I was talking to somebody about this the other week, that, that in VR, this is an interesting um, paradigm that's happening, that, that the experiences don't have to be hyper-realistic. In, in soft skills training, this is different, okay? So this goes for more technical skills training. But in, at least this is, this is all new, new, new thinking, right? New studies here. But, but the idea is that by creating these experiences, you have to create a world for the user that's believable, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't have to look like the real world, but the user has to believe that it's real. So as an example, we all, when we watch, you know, Superman, we believe that in that, when we watch that movie, we're in Superman's world, right? We have built the world up. They, the, the filmmakers have built that world up in our minds. So we now understand, or we believe that in this reality, Superman can fly. We know that people can't fly. It's a physical impossibility, but we believe it and we buy into that vision while we're watching that film. And so the same idea goes for yeah. VR and training, yeah. right? Is that we buy into the idea as long as you, you create the world correctly and there's certain ways to do that, but you buy into this concept, this idea of this is my world right now and I am in it and this is real. And so hyper-realistic is... I, I always like to bring that up because it's not always about like the visuals have to be hyper realistic, mm -hmm. but there's other things that come into like the physics. So how does a ball bounce, right? How does, when I move my head, how does the world shift, right? So those playing with these different rules of physics and sort of things, you can, you can create these believable worlds that aren't necessarily real, but then you can push that further, right? Then you can use that to expand on what you can do within virtual reality training simulations, as an example, um, and actually create more powerful experiences for people. So it's a very interesting phenomenon that we're all um, learning right now in this industry. Yeah, that's that's a great insight actually. And now when you kind of use the Superman example, you can um, you can imagine how to, to be immersed in that film and to enjoy that film without discounting it from the outset because there's a man flying. What we do is we suspend our reality to enjoy that reality of within the film but within that reality it makes sense that's other right. people accept that and 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 he is accepted for being you know for being right. fly and, and that's a really powerful thing that you can use like in training as an example right if you're training someone to be a welder on a high-rise building right i know i'm standing in my living room in my shorts doing this vr simulation but if you create the world in vr you can make that that user feel as if they're standing Two hundred, you know, hundred stories above downtown New York, working on a new building, and that, that again, creating that that new reality for them, gives this this technology such a powerful, um, such powerful opportunity for folks. It's really cool. We've we've talked a lot about uh, virtual reality training, a bit of a theme for this chat, but um, I wanted to kind of move away with some from specific examples and talk about it more generally um, in terms of a new way of doing things. And I think one thing that we've all had to come to terms with in the last 12 plus months is doing things differently um, and how digital and technology can support us to do that. So I just wonder how you feel that the future of virtual reality is going to continue or evolve and, and what the adoption might be um, if, if that's something that you can comment on or predict, uh, given that we have gone through a period of relying on um, technology to help us do things that we might not have done before. Yeah, you know, I think the, 
the the timing of what's happened in the last year plus and the um, kind of evolutionary cycle of virtual reality technology has been is incredibly well timed and I'm just being careful how I say that obviously but it's is I mean because you can see over my shoulder right I mean that that box up there holds an oculus quest and that that's a whole VR system I mean how expensive would it be to ship that around the world right where if you think about so everything we talked about right about the power of virtual reality and its ability to create presence and you know feeling and all this other stuff is really great but when you look at it from a business case right because at the end of the day that's what it really comes down to right is creating a you know better way to slice bread <clears throat> and so it we, we can we've shown that look vr has this amazing potential in terms of what it can do to human beings and just as and we're just talking about training right mm -hmm. there's so many other things that are that it can that it's it's you know it, it has the power to help you know improve but the ability when you talk to businesses or government organizations about the ability to scale this training the ability to reduce um hazards Right. And then and then the tracking. Right. We didn't really get into that. But but the ability to you can see what people are doing. You know, you can track people and, and, and see, you know, how their bodies are moving, what they're looking at. And so you're getting a lot more you know, information. You can create smarter um, training simulations or follow up with people and give them the support that they need. So, you know, I think that the technology is primed to have momentous effect on industries far and wide and the the pandemic has has shown that we are susceptible to things in this world and and so the 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 um uh, adoption of digital solutions is happening right i mean we're having a conversation on zoom right and so that's just as an exact an example of that so you know i think that you're starting to see adoption with VR technology, you're starting to see it on larger scale. As, as the future unfolds, right, the, the opportunities that, that exist within virtual reality and the ability for it to reduce costs, improve training, you know, reduce training times, all of that stuff, it's starting to capture more businesses and agents and government agencies' attention, right? People are coming and around and they're going, wait a minute, there's better op there's better solutions here. It's the same. I think the same thing that's happening in a lot of our business world of like, wait, maybe we don't need everybody to sit in the office every day, all day. By the way, offices are really expensive, right? So businesses are starting, the pandemic proved that digital solutions can be better in certain ways than our old way of doing things. And I think that virtual reality is just another one of those tools in the toolkit to digitize and make our, business, our businesses and our governments and our, our world more efficient. Um, is I, I don't know if I have a prediction for you in terms of how fast and how big it's going to grow. Um, but but what, from what we're seeing, right, we're we used to get, you know, people that would reach out and 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 it ask us about doing small scale. Hey, we need a couple of things, and now we're getting requests where people are like, hey, we want to buy 400 VR headsets and ship them globally and do a new rollout of a vehicle where every single one of our dealer managers can watch this car come out of the showroom or out of the factory together, right? Like crazy big ideas that that a year or two ago, people people weren't even, it wasn't even on their, their minds, right? They weren't even considering that as an option. Right. And so I think that we're at the beginning of, um, of, of VR's actual adoption and actual evolution is just now happening um yeah. all of us playing in the space the last couple of years we were just this is just the pregame <laughs> we, we were warming up and um and yeah i mean just to kind of absolutely right and um and just to add to that i think kind of the more the more successes that are seen by people uh pushing boundaries with this technology the more comfortable the mainstream will feel in adopting it and looking inward and saying where could i get some of those advantages where could i where could our business benefit uh in the same way that x y and z has and just by seeing those examples of x y and z more frequently and um and uh more aligned to all different types of businesses and uh, consumers and retailers and all of the different use cases, I think only adds belief and proof points to what this technology can do for us. Absolutely.